I have not been to Minnesota in probably 20 years. Bring your ass. Welcome to Flagrant Howls, a Minnesota Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. And reporting live from his brand new <laughs> empty office in his new home is Kyle Tige, folks. Look at I him. Did, I did a pod with uh, Dane yesterday, Dane Moore NBA podcast, and I just want those on YouTube to know that, yes, same outfit I wore yesterday. Uh, uh, <laughs> still looking. Do you sleep well in that hat up. usually? Yeah, pretty much. Just like this. I, you just kind of wake up and you start doing stuff. I've, I've really enjoyed the first time home buyer process, but... Yeah, you just wake up and there's like 14 things to do. So uh, look, doing oh my these gosh. pods, even in August, like I know we were talking offline. What do we talk about? This is a highlight of my week. So this is way more these... fun than assembling a Husky storage shelf for the, uh, for the garage. <laughs> Have you gone to the container store yet for some storage? I, I was Ikea? joking with my wife, but she, she'll give me like a to-do list. And I was running around the other day and I was all done with my to-do list. And then I just kind of like was listening to some pod you and Judd were doing. And all of a sudden I looked up and I was in aisle 42 at Home Depot. Yeah, No idea how I got there. Didn't have anything I needed. I was just all of a sudden in the light switch aisle. I was like, oh, I, I have a problem. So uh, trying to make I have a hot take. trips. I love Home Depot. My wife and I will just Greatest like go to, home, go to like once a month. We'll just wake up on a Saturday and be like. 7 30 do you want to beat the rush to home depot i don't even know what we're getting maybe an outdoor plant you know maybe uh something random we'll see just blindfold each other and send each down an aisle and grab something i love home depot if they put if they put a restaurant and or a sports book in there it's over oh, i'll just i'll just, I'll just live there so <laughs> it's been good it's lights out man uh, I need some Anthony Edwards Olympic Let's takes from you. I believe so. Our, our extraordinary producer Ross Brendel is producing two podcasts at once right now, and so he's going to duck in here for a random Wolf of the Week, I believe. Uh, but this week for the audience here, uh, maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't. This is our Power of Sports Week at Score North across all of our podcasts, benefiting the Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Institute. So all week long, we have several great experiences to buy or bid on at scorenorth.com slash auction and all of the proceeds. We're looking to raise $15,000 this week. All of it goes to benefit the Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Institute, which if you're unfamiliar, so what happens is when anyone from a children up to an adult who may experience a life-altering injury, maybe you were paralyzed, something like my uncle about 14 years ago, uh, motorcycle accident and it was actually the second life-threatening accident he had been in in his lifetime, but he spent three months at Courage Kenny rehabbing, physical therapy, mental, everything. Uh, so they offer a full range of innovative uh, therapies. And so that's what we're raising money for this week. And there's a bunch of things you can check out for yourself to either buy or bid on, but I want to direct people's attention to this one thing in particular. It's the Flagrant Howls Timberwolves experience. So thank you to the Timberwolves for helping us put this together. It's four lower-level tickets to a Wolves game this upcoming season and an Anthony Edwards signed jersey plus $100 to eat at Red Cow in Minneapolis and a meet-and-greet. This might drag down the value. A meet-and-greet with me at the Timberwolves game uh, that you go to. So it's it's right now, it's up for bid at, at scorenorth.com slash auction among a number of other things. Check it out. You can even just straight-up donate if you want to, scornorth.com slash auction. So, In, incredible cause. I know you, but this isn't the first year you've been doing this, is it? This is the second annual for Score okay. North. We used to, real quick story, I was hired at 1500 ESPN Radio as a 24 year old idiot who had no idea what I was doing. And I was hired along with like Tom Pelissero, just a couple other mm -hmm. young guys helping to build this new sports radio platform. Back in 2010, it was March of 2010, and the program director who helped hire me, Steve Conrad, a week after he hired me and Tom Pelissero, was in a car accident. I think it was a motorcycle accident on the freeway um, and almost didn't make it, but he spent months in the Courage Kenny Rehabilitation uh, Institute to get as much back as he could physically and everything else. And then like later on that year, my uncle got into a an accident too and had to spend time there so just i don't know for me personally this kind of goes back 12 14 years yeah for us as a podcast company and formerly uh our old radio shows just there's a lot of meaning here our friend chuck aoki who's one of the stars of the u.s wheelchair rugby team going for uh his fourth paralympics later on this month he uh, he you know he started off as a kid courage kenny rehabilitation institute so just trying to shine a light on a good cause and, and raise some money 
Yeah. Yeah. Great cause. You know, I always say this, you kind of planted this in my brain, but always, you know, my goal is always to do content for free. Uh, I think that's kind of been your thing too, is I don't want paywalls or subscriptions or any of that stuff. Um, I just want the people that consume it and that enjoy it to support the people that support us. So this is about as good of a way as ever to support us by also supporting people that do real important work. Uh, so yeah, go to the website, bid on stuff. What was it again? Cause I'm going to go bid on that too. Cause I, yeah. I've seen you before and we can hang out for free, but I would like that Jersey <laughs> and those seats. So what is the website? It's a scorenorth.com slash auction done. Okay. Yeah, Added so to my make notes. A mental note folks. Okay. Give me, we've, we've had two team USA games. They've looked outside of Joel Embiid, who they finally just decided to put on the shelf yesterday. The whole <laughs> team has looked amazing. Jason Tatum. Congratulations. You got to play, uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Um, give me, uh, give me an Anthony Edwards Olympics take. I'm just going to put you on the spot. Uh, youngest player on the best team in the world right now, team USA. Uh, and he's accepting a role while also, uh, I'm kind of reusing this one, but the, the hoop collective is a podcast that Brian Windhorst does with some other ESPN guys. And Windhorst has been following team USA for a month. Um, which is funny because I think for like two and a half weeks, he didn't have his luggage. It was like lost in, in Dallas, Texas. Um, but he did, at about the 15 minute mark of their latest pod, he just did eight minutes on how fun it is to cover Ant and how Ant follows Kevin Durant everywhere, like a little brother. Uh, and I just think this whole experience, whether or not they win gold, which they should, they're pummeling teams, uh, is just one more kind of chapter in, not the book that Chris Hine is writing about Ant, but just Ant's whole story that he gets to come off the most success he's ever had playing basketball, Western Conference Finals trip, and then he's just going to spend a month hanging out with KD and LeBron and Steph, and I just, um, it's a little more macro, but I think big picture, this is just another thing that's going to make him, elevate him, make him a top five player, maybe the best player in the world. So the experiences that he's getting at such a good young age is incredible, and you know, at some point, maybe four years from now when, we host the Olympics, right? In 2026? It's, yeah, I think so. Pretty sure that's um, accurate. Yeah. He's probably going to be the face of it. So this is all just, you know, I'm a big repetition guy. I'm a big experiences guy. So for Ant to get all of that this summer coming off really good basketball, it just kind of makes me think that the sky is the limit for him. The sky is the limit for this organization. And it does really get you excited, even though it's technically, you know, exhibition, international play, whatever. Uh, that the Timberwolves next year are going to be a force to be reckoned with, and it's because of 22-year-old Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Have I, I don't think, I think Judd and I talked about this. I don't think you and I have. My my Olympic basketball springboard theory for young players. Mm -hmm. No, tell me. And it's it, it was anecdotal at first and just a theory I had in my head, but I actually went through a few weeks ago before the like the Olympic exhibition games and tried to prove it that, like my theory has been for years that oftentimes the Olympic experience is a huge springboard for really talented players to either put up a career season the next year or lead their team to a height that previously it had not been to, or maybe they had plateaued, especially for that sweet spot of like 22 to 26, 27 year old. When you're, you're still impressionable, you're still growing as a player and as an athlete that like you made the points you get around for, for like a month, you get to hang out with the best players in the world. Some of the best coaches in the world, like this coaching staff is it's Steve Kerr, Tyron Lou, it's uh, Eric Spolstra. And you get to hang. And by the way, uh, Mark few, who's one of the top two or three best college basketball coaches. And if you look out 30 years in basketball history, it's kind of amazing how many guys it's not, I'm not saying like every player comes out the best version of themselves, but it's kind of amazing how many players immerse themselves in the Olympic experience and then have like analytically a career year or scoring yeah. a career year, or like even in the case of Kobe Bryant, you know, he goes to the redeem team and whatever it was, 2008 comes out of it. Boom. Back to back championships. And, and the Lakers are back to being the Lakers, but like just a few examples, uh, 22 year old Dwayne Wade joined the 2004 Olympic team, which actually won the bronze. That was the most embarrassing Olympic team, but he still got to be around like some of the best players in the world in the competition. The following season, his scoring jumps from 16 points a game to 24 points a game, all NBA heat, go to game seven of the Western conference finals, like boom, 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 23 year old Grant Hill back in 1996, 
the following season was his analytical peak. The next season was his top win shares ever, his top player efficiency rating, career high in steals, assists, his highest MVP ranking. Like, I could give you the same thing, Kyle, for Ray Allen in 2000, Chris Paul redeemed team in 2008, uh, James Harden in 2000. Like, there's like 10 or 12 great examples. And I think, I think they're going to win gold. But I think most importantly for Timberwolves fans, I think this is going to be a springboard for Anthony Edwards. He's going to jump in scoring. He's going to jump in efficiency. I think there's a chance the Wolves, if they stay healthy, knock on wood, could be Western Conference Finals into maybe NBA Finals. So I don't know, man. Like That's my theory, and I think you're seeing it play out with him being one of the five-ish most important teams on maybe the second most talented basketball team ever assembled in world history. Think about that for a second, too. You That was all great points. I had kind of just overlooked the coaching element of it, right? Spo, Steve Kerr, Mark Few, so many mm-hmm. so many guys. Um, I saw like a random video where it was dissecting how Europeans kind of play defense and how they guard, pick, and roll, and the little intricacies that Steve Kerr and his staff have done to adjust. It was basically like high pick and roll, the help side defender would kind of cheat in, and then the guy that was in the slot would basically do like a 45 degree angle cut into the paint or, you know, cut through. And it made it even harder for that guy to kind of cheat and guard both guys. And the two video samples that I saw were Ant. And it's just Ant learning how to move without the ball. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so to everything you said about him, he's not the man right now, right? With this team, that's, he might, he might be the most outspoken. He had mm-hmm. a funny thing today where he was defending Joel Embiid. Uh, against the booze from France. And he basically was like, how many more seven footers do you want? Like you got Wemby and you got Rudy. Right. So he, uh, <laughs> I would imagine he's also just becoming beloved from all of his older veteran teammates. A lot of guys that are hall of famers have won multiple rings, MVPs. Everyone talks about ant. Like we love this kid. We knew he was cool. We knew he was funny. We knew he was good, but it's actually really awesome to be around him for a month. So he's doing everything right. He's saying all the right things. He's learning so much. But yeah, to your point, that springboard theory, that's that's real. I mean, you've seen that before. So as much as we want to talk about like the the draft class and, and TJ and Rob or, you know, another year of Carl and Rudy, <clears throat> this whole thing is all about Ant. I mean, the, the face of the franchise, all that stuff is about Ant. And if he levels up again, it doesn't necessarily matter who plateaus or what happens around him because he can just <clears throat> lift all boats. So this yeah. is a great experience for him. Um, I think he's really bought into his role, but when he comes out there again, like you hit, he hit that three against South Sudan when they were, the game was over, but South Sudan was trying to worry about point differential and, and said, bleep your point differential. Let, let me hit this three with five seconds left. So uh, he's still a killer. He's still the same guy that we watched all throughout the playoffs, but yeah, it's been a great experience for him, and it does. It makes you really, really excited to see, like, what is he going to look like in year five starting in October? Yeah, well, what, what did they win? Remind me, what, was it 53? What did they win last year in the regular season? Like, in the low 50s, right? Yeah. 53 mm-hmm. or 54 or something like that. Like, we remember playoff Ant, because playoff playoff Ant was a different level than regular season ant and he's been throughout his career like he, like his point his scoring goes up he, he's he's rebounding more in the playoffs most importantly his shooting efficiency and shot selection have been better in his career in the playoffs we're now mm-hmm. i mean there's a there's a nugget i can't remember who uh threw this out there but i and i did some digging on like nba's stat database his pull up jumpers in the regular season versus the playoffs are much more dialed in in the playoffs where he becomes like one of the best spot up pull up shooters in the league. He becomes Kevin Durant as a pull up shooter in the playoffs regular season. It's a little bit hit or miss and less efficient. So, I mean, here's a, here's another ant take, I guess if the playoff experience and then the Olympic experience can get him more regularly dialed into playoff ant, the one that's, that's not giving you like the three for 14s once in a while. Right. But like the guy that goes four for nine and gets to the free throw line and who's efficient, dude, they might have like eight or 10 extra wins in the regular season. in them, if he just dials it in, like he does in the playoffs every year in the regular season, if you get that version for the majority of 82 games, we can sit here and debate like, you know, Oh, their backup point guard situation and Dillingham and Terrence Shannon jr. And what can Joe Ingles give you? But I mean, you said it, 
if we get playoff ant more regularly in the regular season, that might be what gets you to 60 wins instead of yep. all these other fringe things, right? Yeah, and why why do we there's many reasons LeBron James is considered one of the best of all time, but two of those reasons is how he's taking care of his body and then just how he kind of brings it every night. Now, again, he's almost 40 or is 40, so maybe he doesn't bring it every night now, but that was one of the things that LeBron was known for back in his prime or his younger days. And for Ant to be, you know, the KD story is cool because he clearly, Kevin Durant is his favorite player and it is a big brother, little brother relationship. We saw that in round one of the finals when they were John back and forth. But then also too, like those photos that the Wolves tweeted out the other day about Ant and his uh, current fitness level. He has about 42 abs and he's taking his body seriously and he's, you know, been doing more recovery and you know he probably still has a cheat meal here and there but he's just learning not only so many things about how to be a better player again on the court but he's learning how to take care of his body how to talk to the media um how to be you know just like lebron kd and steph those guys in the peak of their powers were caring about basketball games in january just like they cared about basketball games in may so yeah to your point i've seen the the over under win projections and stuff there's no reason that this team can't just cruise and chew up a bunch of wins even in a loaded western conference that just somehow keeps getting better and better i mean think about last year's western conference standings and then just throw the grizzlies back in right like Mm -hmm. we'll see how good they are but you know if john morant's john morant that's another team that's like i didn't even think about them so in Wemby another year with chris paul so uh the west is going to be tougher than ever but ant is learning all the right things to be like every single night matters and I think that's kind of the Chris Finch philosophy. That's why they don't do load management. They they handle every game like it is a playoff game. So if playoff ant just becomes regular season ant, uh, you're right. Like, why can't this team finish first in the West? Something that they failed to do last year. Why can't they win 60 games? I mean, again, the sky is kind of the limit. I might throw the Spurs in the mix, actually. Maybe I'm just catching some Wemby fever watching. Dude, that guy is just ridiculous. And I feel like where he was at the beginning of the season and then where he was at the end of the year and now what he's doing for Team France. Um, I I don't know if they have the horses to win enough games to to really compete, but San Antonio is going to be interesting. He, here's a question, like with Wemby, with, I mean, Shea Gilgis-Alexander on Team Canada, which player in the current Western Conference do you think is going to be Ant's biggest personal rival over the next like seven years seven eight nine years uh, like I is mean, it do you think it's Wemby or do you think it's do you think it's Luca I have thoroughly enjoyed the Wemby experience I've almost been a hater just because it's like there's no way this kid at this age and this body frame I mean, he he's you can tell he's getting bigger every day but uh there's, just, there's no way he can be this good and he is this good uh, I still think it's probably Luca, um, because I think the Mavs are a full cemented tier above the Spurs. I think the Spurs can be a lot more fun this year. They drafted well. They get Chris Paul, but I don't know. Like, I would would you be shocked if I told you that their ceiling was like thirty five wins? That's it's tough to just take like a leap in the Western Conference. So I still think it's Luca because if you're wondering who is Ant going to kind of go against or have these battles, like when we saw you know the LeBrons versus Stephs. Of the world, uh, it's probably Luca because they're going to be two good, good teams contending for that top spot in the West. But yeah, I mean, I, I asked Dane this yesterday, and you and I have talked about this before, and we'll do our we'll do our top one hundred update next well, week. That might be next week. Yeah. Cooking on that, uh, we've we've joked about, hey, can Anthony Edwards be the best player in the world? And you just kind of like, I don't know. To me, it just goes over my head. Like, yeah, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. But when you really think about it, if if there was a time and place where we hopped on here where we're like, hey, Anthony Edwards is the best basketball player on earth, can you imagine what that would mean? It would it would mean that the team is top two in the West, probably making the finals. You know what I mean? Like you're not the best player in the world on a seven seed. So it just kind of hit me watching him play for Team USA and and I was rewatching some of those Nuggets games just because at night, what else do I have to do? Uh and it's just wow. wow. That, that, it's, it's, it's incredible to think where he was when he came out in 2020 and how raw he was to where he is now, not just physically, but also mentally. And yeah, the, the Western conference battles with him and Luca or him and Wemby 
or, you know, maybe if Zion kind of figures this out, like there's a lot of guys that Ant's going to go against, but there's no reason that you can't say that Ant has everything in his toolbox to be as good, if not better than them. Yeah, because it's got to be it's got to be players who are within three years of his age, probably just so it, it lines up for a like but isn't a Luka seven like year 25? period. He's yeah, he's I think he he was it was his age 24 season. I think he may have turned 25. So he fits. He's like two years older, two and a half, whatever it is. Shea Gildas Alexander, we haven't seen enough like clashes with those two guys. We might now. Like there's a chance those two teams could could meet in the playoffs at some point in the next year or two. And that like Yo- Jokic, I mean, right now it's a little they don't play the same. Like if they were both wings, I think you'd compare them more. But Jokic is also 28. He's he's a half decade older. So they're gonna battle for a little bit, but at some point, yeah. I think Jokic is like a like a half NBA generation too old to be in that mix. Maybe the answer is Tatum, because my hope is that once uh, the new media rights deal, which has now been reported, but it's like officially locked in, I think the next step for the league will be to start flirting with the Seattle expansion, the Vegas expansion. Um, And then the next logical step, right, in that process is they got to move a team to the east. And what team is better suited to move to the east than the Minnesota Timberwolves? Okay, Judd and I did a little bit of this on Flag and House, I think, earlier this week. I'm glad you brought this up, because geographically— the Pelicans and the Grizzlies are are further east on the longitude scale. But those teams have already like a southern pocket of just mm-hmm. easy travel. Mm-hmm. They're right down there with like the Spurs and the Rockets, like the Texas teams. And like they've, they've got a cluster of teams that are just easy back and forth travel. Do you know the closest geographical Western Conference opponent for the Timberwolves travel wise? Oh, it's got to be the Nuggets. It's Oklahoma City. Oh, whoa. geographically, okay. dude, which and, and the Nuggets are number two. OK, but but the it's four states away. Right. As currently constructed. So I'm with you, man. Like you're going to those two teams, Seattle and Vegas, like those two cities are going to get a team and they, they already have arenas like it's all the infrastructure is all there. You just need a logo and an expansion roster, basically, and you can roll the ball out. It makes way more sense geographically to put the Wolves in the same division as the Bulls. The Bucks, probably the Cavaliers, maybe the Pacers, maybe, maybe the, Pistons. The, like the Pistons. Kind of depends on what that looks I mean, like. It, but. it is, you know, as a Midwesterner at heart, but now living out on the West Coast, it is so weird that the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Portland Trailblazers are in the same, not just conference, the West, yeah. but the same division. Uh, it's weird. And again, obviously, as a fan, I would hope that they move to the East because even if the East is getting better and Paul George goes over there and the Celtics are the best roster in the league, it's still just a far lesser conference than what's going. I mean, the, the Magic, who are really young, they're one of the best teams in the East. I think they'd be good in the West, but they wouldn't be a top six team in the West. So it would be great. Um, once they figure out this arbitration thing this November, maybe that can be part of the deal is just can we also negotiate uh, moving the team to the Eastern Conference? Because, again, it would be cool, you know, Wolves, Bucks. that's, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, that should be a rivalry. It should be. It'd be weird at first, but there'd be so many great travel opportunities. Like if you're, the Wolves are going to be good and competitive as long as Anthony Edwards is the face of this franchise. So like you're looking at, you know, another half decade plus contractually and then hopefully more. And you can, so you, you, you might want to travel and go watch the, Wolves. like people travel to watch the Vikings, people when the twins are good, travel up and down Kansas city. Like, where are you traveling to to watch the Wolves outside of a, a one-off destination? If the Wolves were playing the Bulls more often and it mm-hmm. meant something in conference and the Bucks, like, I just, I think it'd be actually be great for the franchise. I think it'd be great for the NBA. The, the Wolves are out of place as a Western Conference team geographically. They just are. And it would be weird for the first couple seasons, but I think once the weirdness subsided in like 2027, it would feel so natural It'd be so much fun. You'd have you'd also have other teams' fans infiltrating Target Center, which sounds like a nightmare in some cases, but it's also a lot of fun too. It's, it's so. like if, yeah, it's like if the Vikings were in the AFC West. It just it doesn't really make a lot of sense, and it would be cool. That's one thing that the NBA does kind of lack. Uh, like rivalries are are oftentimes more between players. I mean, you know, like if you have the Nets and the Knicks that kind of share a city, that's I guess a little bit of a rivalry. Clippers Lakers, but you yeah. don't really have those border battles right so if you could have wolves bucks as kind of a border battle uh that would be really cool so let's uh 
once Adam Silver is done trying to continue to sell underwear, maybe we can focus on <laughs> realignment and moving the wolves into the east. All right, let's bring him in here. He's our producer extraordinaire. He's literally producing two shows at once right now. He's producing yeah. Purple Access right now, too. Look at that. But he is, he's jumped in here for a random wolf of the week. Roscoe. How you boys doing? Well, we're, we're negotiating contemplating a raise life and well, let's a raise. Let's, let's, yeah, let's negotiate a raise, a raise for you if you're going to be producing one. two podcasts at once. And uh, we're we're hypo- hypothesizing wolves as an Eastern Conference team at some point. I think that that makes a ton of sense, and I love that it would create that rivalry between the Bucks and the Wolves, which has never really existed. And to Phil's point, it would become a bit more of a travel destination, like it has for Twins fans going to Miller Park. Vikings fans yeah, going to good. Lambeau. You see a lot of wild fans at uh, Why Am I Blanking United Center for like the the, the Blackhawks rivalry. I don't know why yeah. I was blanking so much on what Chicago's team's name. <laughs> team They've name been was for pretty hockey. irrelevant for a few years now. Yeah, but they've won a lot of Stanley Cups too. So, so Kyle has uh, I don't know like whatever vendor coming over for new house things in <laughs> like the guy downstairs minutes. trying to fix my shower. So uh, <laughs> is he down there right now? He just rang the doorbell. I have all these cameras oh. and stuff. These notifications going on. So do you have to go or can you do no, a random let's, wolf? Let's do random wolf quick. Okay, random wolf of the week. Yeah. Ross has clues. All time, Kyle leads sixteen to nine. The last handful of random wolves are Felton Spencer, Kevin Love, Michael Williams, and Kata Bates Giap. Uh, if one of us hits a third incorrect guess, the other one wins automatically. No Googling. Heat check guess in play. Doesn't count as an official guess. Here we go. Let's go so Kyle can get some housework done. Ooh, that rant- guy showed up like 13 minutes early, too, by the way. I appreciate it. I'm not even mad. Right. I love yeah. an on-time arrival. Yep. This random wolf of the week is the current head coach of the Pike Red Devils high school basketball team. Hmm. Heat check time. Kyle, you go first. I see those hands moving. You There's better not be. There's so much happening. Uh, Randy Foy. No. Uh, Brandon Roy. Well, I like the alliteration there. No. Number two. <laughs> this random wolf of the week last played in the National Basketball Association during the 2021 season. Okay. It's not Will Avery. We know that. This random wolf of the week played college basketball in the ACC. ACC last played in 2021. Pike Red Devils, high school basketball coach. Pike Red Devils. This, this is, just, is random this is peak wolf. flagrant howls right now. There's just <laughs> it is commotion going on. I'm like trying to think of. Where did Sebastian Telfer? Play? Okay, let's keep. By the going. way, Kyle is trying to determine in his head too how long until I have to let Phil just win this by default because I have a random vendor yeah. in my new house. Right <laughs> Kyle's now. wondering how long before the vendor leaves because I don't answer the door. This random wolf of the week was an ACC All Freshman Team member in 2008. We're going to stick with the ACC here and try and move along. I have a guess. As, okay. Wes Johnson. It is not Wes Johnson. I do like guessing early. We may have to limit the guess because we so seldomly get to three guesses. This random wolf of the week was named to the all ACC second team in 2009. So it should come as no surprise. This is a pretty good basketball player. This random wolf of the week gentleman played for five different NBA franchises. Ty Lawson. <laughs> I know. I so tried to error. mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson is not correct. <laughs> it's a great guess, though. Oh, no other player in Wolves history shared the same last name as this random Wolf of the Week. Hmm. Wow. Wait, Wes, Wes Johnson's looking like a, a very bad guess in retrospect. <laughs> Based off of that clue. <laughs> this random Wolf of the Week is on Phil and Kyle's top 100 Wolves of all time list. This random wolf of the Doesn't week is a one-time NBA All-Star. A one-time 
NBA All Star oh. is this random Wolf of the Week? I'm cooked now. I was gonna say Wayne Ellington. <laughs> this random not an official guest. Week. He's one of the most guest players in Random Wolf history. By the Wayne way. Ellington and Will Avery. This random Wolf of the Week is a one-time NBA champion, gentlemen. I think it'll start to turn here. These clues have been kind of vague. I'll give you that. This random Wolf of the Week played parts of three seasons for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Hmm. This random Wolf of the Week played for two different head coaches during his time with the Timberwolves. Boy, this is a, this is a, guys, a, a dark this it's one. a dark era of Wolves basketball. I mean, you're literally talking like it's the post KG into Tom Thibodeau kind of. Well, he's got the timing down, Kyle. He may be slightly mm -hmm. ahead of you on this one. This random Wolf of the Week, gents, is a guard. This random Wolf of the Week averaged over 12 points per game during his NBA career, 13.4 points per game during his time with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh my gosh, dude. My hunch Kevin is Martin? This... Is that a guess? I guess, yeah. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> I think it's going to turn here, boys. I don't even know where he played college basketball. It's no going to be on one of these next two guesses. So be I'm literally on one of these afraid next... to guess and unmute myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more of that air horn Blood or whatever it is in, in the, the background. background. <laughs> it's going to turn here, boys. Be ready. Before joining the Wolves, this random wolf of the week was an Indiana Pacer. Interesting. I thought that one might do it. I oh think this God. one's going to do it, though. Be ready. In 2017, this random wolf of the week signed a three-year contract to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Pacers to Wolves. Oh, wow. Here we go. This random wolf of the week is not Alan Crabb, although he was traded for him in 2020. Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. 2017 Pacers. I'm going to need more clues. This is torture. This random now, wolf. And I, I only have one guess left, right? Yeah. Correct. This random wolf of the week won an NBA championship as a member of the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, my God. Martel Webster? Jeff Teague. Jeff Teague. That's, it's, it's, yeah. Jeff Teague. Oh. It is Jeff Teague. Nice job, dude. And thank <laughs> goodness. Shout out to Jeff Teague. Shout out to <laughs> Alan Crabb. Shout out to West Coast Tubs, who are currently <laughs> my favorite tub-fixing vendor on the West Coast. Uh, um, good stuff for us. Good stuff. I also feel like Martel Webster gets guessed an awful lot. He's he's in the top three of random Wolf of the Week guesses. He's up Man, there at, at some so point. So Jeff Teague, just a quick review, is coaching a high school team. Uh, his high school team, allegedly, per the uh, Wikipedia, if it can be trusted. He, you, he also has another. one of the biggest basketball podcasts in the world right now, well, too. I don't know if it's bigger than ours, but was that one of the clues, Ross? Did you have him as a podcast? I did not. I didn't okay. want to put that in there because I thought that that would give it away. Too obvious. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Half the league has a podcast. Now. Well, okay, yeah. fair <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> well, there it is. The random wolf of the week. We've gone, we've gone back and forth. The last back-to-back, -back, it's been two, two and a half months since we had a back-to-back -back winner. Uh, Costa Kufos and Jared Bayless being those two. Phil Congratulations to Kyle. He needs to go <laughs> discuss strategy with West Coast tubs <laughs> right now. Phil had a chance to get to double digits. Are you having a tub resurfaced, Kyle? What's happening? Yeah, quick, a uh, little behind the scenes. There's like a uh, little chip or crack in the fiberglass. Uh, Ross, yeah. I, Ross, we'll talk on the side. I'm learning okay. so much about houses. I feel I uh, I installed a bunch of flooring the other day. I mowed my grass for the first time, which is pretty easy. It takes me 32 seconds to mow my grass because it's oh. about six little square feet. But uh, learning a lot, but no more fun than I scissors? do on Flagrant House. <laughs> Basically, yeah. With the scissors? <laughs> yeah, it takes it longer to cut whatever hair I have left on my head than it does to cut my grass. Well, congrats again, Kyle. We're excited for another uh, weekly housing update. New house owner, Kyle Tige. This is Flagrant Howls, everybody. Uh, your favorite. And by the way, I think we're doing Top 100 Wolves updated yep. list next week. Get ready for it. I think that's it. happening next week.
your favorite Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. See you guys.